Thank you for joining Wars of the Rosies. And this is Purposeful Life by Ralph M. Lewis, FRC. An article from Rosicrucian Digest, Volume 10, Number 1, February 1932. Purposeful Life by Ralph M. Lewis, FRC. If we stop to realize the variety of the forms of entertainment, the devices, systems, and means intended to occupy the human mind, we are apt to think that the fundamental purpose of life is play, or to pass time, the fads and fancies of the moment, common to use, and to be seen displayed for sale in the leading emporiums throughout the world, are but transit. A year, even six months from now, many will be non-existent. So fickle is the superlative desires of man. However, a multitude of new ones will supplant those that exist, and they will intrigue and appeal for a brief period also. In most instances, the devices purchased or the methods resorted to are not intended to bring a lasting sense of satisfaction. The player, for an example, does not expect a feeling of exuberance, nor does he really intend, in some instances, to produce a state of mental relaxation. Most of the devotees of the modern fancies and fads find dissipation, nervous disorders, and financial embarrassment to be the ultimate result of their devotions. A moment's contemplation soon convinces us that there is a fine but definite distinction between play and the occupation of the mind. Taking into consideration our present civilization under normal times, we find in this age of mechanization a larger amount of unoccupied time. It is not so far back in the memory of some of our living today that they can recall the necessity of working from sunrise to sunset. Most of the present generation can recall 12 and 14 hour days of mill and farm. An individual who was occupied with duties 12 hours of the day, nevertheless, definitely established on some day during the week a period for play. This was intended for play in the full sense of its meaning. A sport or hobby was participated in, not to prevent the time from becoming monotonous, but because actual amusement was desired. The result of such participation was a real mental tonic, a stimulus that carried the individual through the subsequent week with a renewed vigor. Perhaps if that same individual could have scheduled his affairs so as to devote more time to his hobby or sport, his appetite for it would soon have been jaded. Our present eight-hour system of labor and the contemplated six-hour day afford, in the average instance, four or five hours additional time, which must be occupied. Those features which appeal to the senses and physical pleasure are soon exhausted. The constant repetition of any act eventually produces monotony. Thus, outer attractions intended to avoid monotony actually contributes to it, eventually. Real play is intended as a relaxation and that only. Occupation of the mind to one who needs to resort to external things to obtain it is the greatest labor man can impose upon himself. The men and women who in our modern world are compelled to go the highly accelerated pace of business or industry find that their objective brain consciously must be concentrated intently on all the impressions of the senses. They must be keenly, physically alert. Their eyes, ears, senses of feeling, taste, and smelling must function perfectly. Their nervous system must be highly keyed and respond instantly. Upon the close of the day and their return to their abodes, there is the ultimate reaction to be expected. Their senses have been trained to register every impression and their objective consciousness to handle hourly a mass of complex impressions, assembling and reassembling them. The human nervous system has been raised to a degree of high sensitivity, increasingly, year after year, until there can be no relaxation without the loss of consciousness. During the process of sleep, there is a temporary suspension of this objective consciousness. But when awake, and this consciousness is not occupied, this objective consciousness permits them, in a subtle way, to realize the nervous tension they are under. It produces unrest, monotony, distraction, ill-ease, and the constant desire to resort to diversions. These diversions, Pleasing for the moment, satisfying for a time, soon become habits. As habits are fixed and established, 
They no longer occupy the consciousness of the brain. They become a routine. Then the devotee of the external pleasure is compelled to filter from one pastime to another, always with the hope that one will be more fascinating than the other and more lasting in its satisfaction. There is but one avoidance of this dread condition of mental unrest, the dedication of the mind to a fixed purpose in life. If one intends his life to be purposeful, then every act entered into contributes towards reaching the final objective. There is a cause, and every act is to fulfill that cause. If your present occupation is not your ideal one in life, but merely a means of livelihood, then in the time not occupied in routine work, prepare yourself for the true place or niche in the workaday world. If you are merely a human machine with no other object in life than to live, you will go the way of all machinery. You will wear out while running and disintegrate while not running. The individual who visions his place in the cosmic scheme lays out his entire plan of life systematically. His goal is his incentive. He never tires of aiming for it. It ever is appealing, alluring, and satisfying. There is nothing that gratifies like creating towards a definite end because with each act or thought, we are placing a segment in place towards the erection of some complete structure. This individual purpose of life, one becomes conscious of from within and not from without. By looking around us, we cannot determine what our purpose in life should be. The past that we see others travel perhaps would not be the one we should travel. They might be contrary to our nature, our character, and abilities. Your natural tendencies, your loves, your desires, the things that appeal from within are the things that should form your ideal in life and should be the purpose for which you live, the goal towards which you should travel. Hesitate for a moment. What is the mad race of life about? Are you painting a picture of life by your actions, by your way and mode of living? You are, but are you in it? When your cycle here is closed, would you be proud of the picture that would be shown of your life from cradle to grave? Or would you want to blot out the personality in the sense because of its ugliness, because of its lack of contribution to something finer or better? Would you stand out in the scene of your life as a mighty light that shone far ahead into the future? Have you ever thought why you are living at all and what the purpose is? Remember that even the simplest tool has a reason for its existence. What is yours? Have a purpose in life and you need not seek outside, exterior ways and means to absorb your time, to appease your senses or to occupy your mind. The bringing into fulfillment of that purpose will assure you a more lasting happiness than any elusive, illusionary appeal to the outer you. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment and if you can please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.